Terror here at D-Lab. In the shop tonight, I have a Fender Silverface Champ in dire need of restoration. This poor thing has seen better days. Let me give you a guided tour. You can see what I'm talking about. So here we go. Let's take a look at the cosmetics. As you can see, she's pretty badly corroded. You sweep across here. The knobs are all original. Input jacks severely rusted the inside of those is also corroded so they're going to make terrible ground connections got to change those out now let's go to the inside so here we are inside I'm going to take it from the power transformer over you can see here we got a spare nut hanging out here on the wire that's going to this fuse holder that was changed there's also a pretty good bash mark here I'm going to try to straighten that up. Take a look at the circuitry. Power supply section. You can see this cap is blasted. This big glob of solder. I'm not sure if somebody tried to repair that or if it came out of the cap. Here's a rubber insulator that used to be in the cap. This resistor here, cooked. That should be a 1K resistor. Here's the 10K that feeds the preamp section. So obviously we've got to change all that out. These little caps here are notorious for being bad. They dry out, so we have to change those. Here are the tone caps. Now if you watched my previous Champ video, you know that these fail. The leads actually crack where they enter the caps. So we're going to change these out with some sprigs. Now let's take a look at the tubes. So here is the 5Y3 rectifier that was installed in the SAMP. You can see how dark she is. It's been arcing internally and you can hear this rattle. This thing is toasted, okay? And what took it out is the filter cap. I don't know if you can see, but the center of this phenolic insulator is actually bulged out. It's coming at me, okay? This cap has shorted internally, has high leakage, which overloaded the rectifier tube and luckily did not burn out the power transformer. Here is the 6V6 that was installed and you can see right there there's a big dark area where it was also internally arcing. Reason for that is when this cap right here shorted that was a cathode cap so when it shorted the 470 ohm resistor was bypassed it directly shorted the cathode to ground and that's what ate the output tube. So when I get amps in here in this condition, I do not even attempt to power them up and see if they play. I remove all the tubes and I check that power transformer immediately. And here it is under test. Thank God it's alive. There are some smells in here of burnt electronics, but I'm assuming that was his fried resistors and caps over here causing that. Power transformer survived. First thing I'm going to change out is the main violator, this Mallory filter cap. She served its purpose, but this guy is the main culprit for pretty much everything that's went wrong in this amp. I'm going to change it out with this CE manufacturing cap, which is a little bit smaller package size, and it's a very nice general purpose replacement for these fender champs. Then we're going to go underside, obviously remove all these blasted components. We're going to remove all these leaky caps. The old coupling caps are leaving. Input jacks, etc. I have all my new parts ready. Nice spray coupling caps. Switchcraft jacks. We're good to go. So let's get this old filter cap out. You can see two of the mounting tabs aren't soldered. And two are. 
So we'll just kind of clippity doo da get these wires out of there. Then I'm going to bend these tabs here. So that's the easy part. These other two tabs are under some big gigantic globs of solder. So I'm going to take my big fat Unger iron and heat these up, bend these tabs up, and the cap will fall out. So here's the star of the show. The Gargantua Unger soldering iron. My dad used this thing to solder brass slot car chassis. It's got a lot of heat. does a lot of work fast. You can see I was able to peel that tab right on down. Do the other side, cap a fall out. Desoldered, ready to pull. And there she goes. I'll clean up this mess and get the new cap in. So here's a close-up of that filter cap. Remember I was telling you about the bulge here? If you look right there, you can see it's also cracked. Phenolix cracked. So she's getting ready to blow up like a big cigar. So when I install the new cap, I'm not going to just solder the two tabs like they did. I want to do all four. So I always take a little Dremel, clean up the metal. Get the corrosion off there so the solder will stick. And then we'll have a really good secure mounting of the new cap. New filter caps installed. You can see all four ears are soldered. This section here, I'm going to leave disconnected until I repair this mess. So I'm just going to go from left to right and get these fried resistors, baked caps, etc. off the board, clean her up, and then we'll carefully power up the unit and see if she comes back to life. New components are installed. You see I left the bias resistor that may be changed depending. We have the new switchcraft jacks here, sprig caps, and of course that filter cap. My next step is to bring this thing up on a variac using only the 5 y 3 tube so that I can check the power supply and make sure that's okay. Here is the pile of components that was pulled out. For the initial power supply test I've got my meter set at 1000 volts DC, connected to the filter cap and ground, as well as this 25K load resistor. The resistor is going to help stabilize the power supply and discharge it when I'm done checking it. Over here, I've got my Variac, so I'm going to bring it up nice and slow and watch the current. So I'm going to bring him up and let's go take a look at the meter. Here she comes. Give a little more voltage. So it appears as though all is well. Time to fire the amp up. I've got it into the D-Lab audio test set. Got a scope over here monitoring. And I'm monitoring the bias across the bias resistor with a meter right here. Just plugged her in. We'll see what that bias is. Now, I did measure this resistor. It's supposed to be a 470. It's up to about 540. So more than likely, that resistor is toast. Because once they start changing value, they keep changing value. Especially these old 10% ones. So more than likely, he's coming out. So as I've showed you in my past videos, when I install these caps, I always put a little bit of glue under them to hold them in place. So that the weight of the cap, when it's installed in the combo amp, doesn't vibrate and break the leads. It's a good idea. A couple uh, quick things I want to point out on the capacitors in this amp. Capacitor over here, which is going to pin 3 of the 12AX7, is a cathode cap. That's a 25 microfarad cap. If you look at the schematic off of pin 8, you have another cap over here. And on some of these champs, you'll find that they're only a 2 microfarad cap. I always bump these up to a 25 microfarad cap also. Okay, so that's what this is. And then there used to be a cap sitting right here. Remember the one that blew up? That was also a 25 microfarad cap that went to pin 8 of the 6V6. I always bump that up to a 100 microfarad cap. In this case, it's a 63 volt cap. The reason I do this with these two caps, especially is to give you a better tone roll-off, you'll get better bass 
by doing that little modification. So here's the final bench test of the little champ after repair. Got the audio test set set at a 4 ohm load. Scope input is an audio generator. Let's bring her up. You see some wattage there. If I turn her up and down, let's look at the scope. Looks good, nice and clean. Breaks up there right at the end. The champ lives again. So that, my friends, is how you rebuild your little Fender Champ. The most expensive part that you're going to have to purchase will be that filter cap. They're about $35 to $40 for this little guy, but it maintains that vintage look, so I'd highly recommend it. Tubes, of course, are pricey too, but the rest of these components are fairly inexpensive. The job takes about two hours, so if you're going to do it, do it right. Change all that stuff. Get her fresh and new again to give you another 30 years of joy. Hope you enjoyed the video.